Of course, the price, the price we have paid, the price we have paid in shutting millions of people down, tens of millions of people down, for months now, uh, a couple of months, uh, that price, we will never get that time back. We will never get those earnings back. Businesses will never get back the opportunities that they have lost, the income that they have lost. And of course, and of course, we will pay for years and years and years, decades. The price, the economic price of the shutdown, the economic price of the response to the shutdown, the stimulus package, the Federal Reserve, all the things the government have done since then. And of course, I, we will pay for decades the political, um, political cost of letting them getting away with this, let, let, letting them get away with it. <laughs> the fact that they got away with it. They got away with shutting this country down and very few people said anything. I want to talk a little bit about people who have said something. And one of the, one of the inspiring things that I've noticed over the last week are the people who are standing up for the government. And people have asked me in the past, what can one do? Well, we've got some fantastic examples of what one can do beyond speaking, beyond writing, beyond yelling, beyond doing podcasts. One can actually act out there in ways that constitute civil disobedience, that constitute protest, but do so in a way that respects the idea of the rule of law, that respects the actual danger that exists out there in terms of the virus, that actually respect science. I think the best example of this, at least the best example I know of this, is what Linda and Quinn Coday have done with a gallery in Napa Valley. They have a gallery in Napa Valley. I've visited the gallery in Napa Valley once or twice. I can't remember now. I visited an older gallery that they had in, somewhere uh, in, in, um, in the Bay Area. But they have been closed since, I think, mid-March when California shut down. Now, I know Linda and Quinn, and they have devoted all their time, all their effort, all their energy, I, I, I assume all their money to this gallery. And it's tough to make a living owning a retail store, particularly an art gallery with art that is not necessarily considered the sexiest, the most prominent in the world in which we live. And it's, it's, it's you know, they've devoted their lives to this. I've known them many years and this is their passion, this is their life, this is what they put their energy into. And they've been shut down. They, they can't go and make a living. They've got employees. They can't hire the employees. They, what are they going to pay them for? Out of savings? And what they did last week was send a letter, and, and you know, I might get some of the details here wrong, but, but generally this is the case. Send a letter to the press and to the government and to the various, I guess, authorities, saying, look, we're opening on Monday. We're going to open responsibly. We're going to only allow X number of people in the gallery. We're going to insist that they wear masks. We're going to practice social distancing. We're going to not let people touch the arts and therefore maybe contaminate their hands if there's coronavirus there. We're going to clean the gallery every night. We're going to take care of it. We're going to make the safest environment possible. And at the same time, but at the same time, we're going to open. It, it is our right under the laws of this country, under the constitution of this country, to open, to pursue our life, to pursue our livelihood, to engage in our property. And if you want to arrest us, arrest us. If you arrest us, we will challenge you in court. And we are willing to go to the Supreme Court if that is what is necessary. But we are not just in protest. They're not doing this for the sake of the protest. They're doing this for the sake of their livelihood. But if this means that it becomes a protest, then so be it. We will protest it using the law of the land, 
using the Constitution all the way, all the way to the Supreme Court. Now that is a beautiful way to take a stand. It is a way to take a stand consistent with the principles of this country. It is a way to take a stand while recognizing and explicitly identifying that there is a rule of law, that there is a constitution that people should abide by. It is a way to say, what you are doing here is unconstitutional. What you're doing, doing here goes against the spirit and the word of the principles underlying this country. So, you know, I think, you know, if, if, if <laughs> that is the way to do it, rather than rushing into state houses armed with guns, I mean, if you're going into state out with guns, then be prepared to use them. And if you're going to be prepared to use them, generally, don't carry a gun unless you're prepared to use them. But if you're openly carrying a gun in a protest at a state capitol, then you're basically declaring revolution. And then you better be prepared for that revolution. You better be prepared for what that entails. But imagine, imagine, as a mass civil disobedience, if hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of small businesses in a particular state wrote a similar letter to the police, to the state legislature, and just on Monday morning opened their stores. What are they going to do? Are they going to run around shutting you all down? Are they going to run around arresting all of you? There is massive power in numbers. And if it's a just cause, then it's not something to hide. It's something to be proud of. It's something to announce, something to declare, something to stand up for your liberty. So if you want to engage in a kind of a civil disobedience, declaring your rights, standing up to authority, then that's the way to do it. Not hide, not open your store in hiding, although of course I think you have a right to do that too, but declare it publicly, send letters to the media, but imagine if we got a movement to do that in the hundreds or in the thousands. Again, they're not going to arrest thousands. That's the power. So let me again thank uh, Linda and Quint for, for, you know, for their courage, for their principled stand, their reason stand. They explain what they do. They're not rushing in. They're not flouting the law for the sake of flouting the law. They're not denying that the coronavirus is a problem. They're not, not wearing masks and rubbing shoulder to shoulder against one another. They're not carrying semi-automatic weapons. They are saying this still is a land of law. You, the government, are violating the principle of that law. We are challenging you to that. And we are taking action. We're not just writing a letter to the editor. We're taking action. So for those of you who want to act... For those of you who keep saying, oh, you know, what should I do, Your Honor? What, what do we do to stand up? Well, here's what you do. Linda and Quint have given, up, given us an example a respectful, strong, powerful, reason, thoughtful. And I think an example will have an impact. And already you're seeing other news stories. But other gallery owners opening up stores. I don't know if they were inspired by Linda and Quint or not. But are the gallery owners saying, wait a minute, why aren't we in essential service? Why are they allowed to open and we're not? Restaurants in California opening saying, we're open. You want to come basically arrest us? Now, I wish they'd say that explicitly. I wish they would engage in behaviors that respected the social distancing. But it's great to see People standing up and acting in their own self-interest, acting on their own values, acting to pursue their own life and their own livelihood. 
And life is livelihood. Livelihood is life. One cannot separate the two. You know, one of a tragic case of this is a woman in Texas who opened up a salon and was arrested. And she just got seven days in jail for that. Horrible. Just unjust. Here's a woman. I mean, she said she's trying to feed her kids. I mean, unfortunately, she used it as kind of, I'm not being selfish. I've got kids to feed. She should have said, I'm being selfish. I've got kids to feed. <laughs> They're my kids. And it's my livelihood. And it's my store. And it's my life. And these are my values. And here's what I did to protect my customers and myself. And my customers didn't have to come to me. They could have stayed outside. They could have stayed home. But we voluntarily chose to take a risk. Who are you to stop us? This is in Texas. The judge sentenced her to seven days in jail. Now, it turns out that I think the, the Attorney General of Texas is denouncing the judge and asking her to reverse reverse the the sentence we'll see if that happens I hope it I, I certainly hope it does but again more people like that they can't arrest you all they can't arrest all of us and I think far more effective than demonstrating in the street which I don't think you have a right to demonstrate particularly if you're blocking traffic and interfering with people's lives but much more effective than occupying state houses than marching on whatever is open your business. Go to work. Take a drive when they tell you not to. And challenge them. Challenge them to enforce the law when a significant number of people think it is wrong and unconstitutional. Challenge them to take it to court. Challenge them to take the principle all the way up to the Supreme Court. Let the highest court in the land determine whether what they have all done is constitutional. I, I've seen many constitutional scholars say, yes, it is, based on precedent. But it would be great to hear the arguments. It would be great to force their hand. And it would be good to hear that the, the, the Supreme Court actually, or whatever, the, the, the whatever court it is, actually say, yes, these lockdowns are constitutional. And then we'd know how much to respect those courts. Because I don't think it's constitutional. Not you have an inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It cannot be that lockdown is consistent with that. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So. I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to youronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...